Hey guys, this is Jeremy with Talking Umbrella Travel, sitting here tonight with a good friend of mine, Andrew Herbert, who just got back from the D23 Expo in Anaheim, California. And I wanted to uh, take a moment and let, uh, let Andrew and I just kind of talk through a couple things. Let Andrew tell us a little bit about what D23 is, uh, some of the announcements that were there, and just an opportunity for us to talk Disney and let you guys follow along for the ride. So Andrew, thank you so much uh, for coming on tonight. Uh, thank you for having me, Jeremy. It's always a pleasure to talk Disney with you. <laughs> Absolutely. So before we go any further, um, while many of our families in the Talking Umbrella group uh, know Disney, they may, they may have been hearing in the news, you know, D23 this and D23 that. So really quick, first of all, tell us what is D20, the all-encompassing D23? So I, I've been surprised how often I've seen D23 come up in the news lately. It, it seems to be everywhere, but uh, D23 is, as Disney puts it, the ultimate Disney fan event. So thousands upon thousands of Disney fans have gathered in Anaheim. It takes place every two years or so because of events over the past couple of years. It's been three years since the last D23 event. And it's a convention of Disney announcements, Disney experiences, Disney uh, dressing up in costume, panels to learn about the history of the company or where things are going in the future. And so everyone who has just a passion and love for Disney uh, shows up and, and has a great weekend. I heard a reporter, uh, and I don't. You, you've been, so you could probably give a, a better uh, explanation of this. A Comic Con for Disney fans. Is, is I, I think so. Talking. I went to Comic Con as a child years and years and years ago, before it became this big uh, media movies and all that kind of stuff. Uh, so I, I would, I would venture to say it is like a Comic Con, but just specifically for Disney. So, so, and folks, essentially, it's this all-encompassing thing. So not only do you have, as he mentioned, uh, Disney, but there also, you know, Fox is there, and Marvel is there, and Lucasfilms is there, and Pixar is there. Pretty much the, the over-encompassing umbrella uh, that is now the Disney company, all these parts and pieces show up, and, you know, they talk about Disney+, Plus, they talk about rides, they talk about the movies that are coming out, and so... Uh, Andrew and I are just going to kind of sit and talk just for a moment. Andrew, tell me, uh, you went to D23, you got a chance to sit through the panels. Of all the things that you heard while you were there, maybe it was the parks, maybe it was the movies, but whatever you feel comfortable talking about, what were the three hits of D23? The three things where you're like, that's going to be amazing. Well, it, it's it, that's hard to say uh, because it's all personal. You know, for me, uh, I think I will always remember uh, when Harrison Ford came out on stage for Indiana Jones 5. The crowd erupted in applause. They, they showed the trailer, kind of talked about the movie, and then all of a sudden he walks out. So it wasn't really expected that Harrison Ford was going to be there. It, he received a standing ovation and he cried. He was holding back tears. And that was just a goosebump moment. Um, uh, in terms of the the parks, I think uh, you know what really stood out was uh, some of the blue sky ideas that they're throwing out there. Uh, th those were very unexpected, so that that caught a lot of the fans off guard. So. With all that that's going on, and again, I know that you're a, a big Harrison Ford fan and a big Indiana Jones fan. And I mean, how could you not be? Um, I'm actually sitting and watching the D23 documentary, The Light and Magic. What's the name of the D? The Industrial Light and Magic. Yeah, the, the documentary on, on Disney Plus, and it's fantastic. Um, you know, and, and Disney releases all these movie ideas and all these park ideas and all these merchandise ideas. So lots of hits. But what about misses? What are some things that, that you maybe don't feel like hit the mark? Uh, well, you know, it, it's, it's tough, certainly tough to say when you are a Disney fan. Uh, but, you know, when you love something so passionately, 
uh, you can see areas of improvement. And it did seem as if the, the parts panel itself was light on announcements. And the, the big announcements that they did make uh, were these blue sky concepts that we may not see built for about 10 years or more, and, or they may not even be built at all. And so it, it kind of felt like Disney was, was holding back on giving some good announcements, but then at the same time, just throwing out a little bit of bread cup crumbs to tease us. So no one left the panel disappointed. Um, I will say the parks panel, normally these big uh, presentations, there'll be some sort of little uh, giveaway, like a poster. You know, we, we left the Disney animation and the Pixar panel with two posters for their upcoming movies. For the Disney parks one, they gave out five things. And I have a feeling that was in order to make everyone happy for the lack of announcements. Yeah. No announcements would give us merch. Yeah, I totally Exactly. Get that. They gave us uh, baked goods to uh, tide us over. Baked goods. Yes. There's apparently, uh, being from Louisiana, I'm not aware of this company, but there's a, uh, a bakery in California that has a very strong following called Porto's. And when they made the announcement that Porto's was coming to downtown Disney, everyone who knew about them erupted in applause. They were so excited for Portos coming to Disney. And then they said, on your way out, you're going to get a box of Portos. And I kid you not, while we were walking around the convention center, we were holding our box. We didn't want to eat them quite yet. We hadn't had lunch. We had at least five people stop and ask us, where did you get the portos from? Because they recognize the color of the box. What, so, so what, what, what is portos? It's a, a bakery. I don't know too much about it. We had uh, like a little churro bite. Uh, oh, yeah. What was in your box? That's a little churro bite of sorts, a, a cookie and a, a, a Danish of some sort. Okay. So was it, was it good? It, it was good. It was good enough. I don't know why people stopped us countless, I mean, countless times to ask where we got the portos from. Right. It was no. It was no Dole Whip. Is what you're saying. It was no Dole Whip. It was no Dole Whip. No Dole Whip. No crumble cookie. None of that stuff. No. Okay. No. Got you. Um, so as we're as I was going through and looking at wh what was announced, and um, I had an opportunity to kind of watch some of the panels uh, through YouTube, and then of course, if you have Disney Plus, they have a recap that you could watch each day to see what was announced. Uh, there were a couple of movies uh, that were announced that I, I wanted to get your opinion on. Oh, uh, sure. The, because you and I both love the Disney classic attractions. We do both love Disney movies. Um, I know there's not a lot that's been said about the new Haunted Mansion remake, but I do know that there was a big announcement made at D23, yeah? Yes. Uh, they, they showed a clip, which I don't believe is online right no, now. It's not. I've looked, I promise. Yes. Because uh, I, I think they showed one for Comic Con too, and I looked all over uh, for for that that footage. Um, so, do you know what the big announcement was? I do, but I want to let you tell them what it was. Okay, so they did show the the footage and uh, teased the different characters. We will be seeing the hitchhiking ghosts, uh, the hatbox ghost. The hatbox ghost is in the movie and will be coming to. Walt Disney World in the yes. Haunted Mansion. Yes, it will. I was hoping you would say that. Yes. So uh, that's some good synergy Disney has working there. Right. And then they teased another announcement, another important character, and then all of a sudden a, a Doom buggy comes across the stage, and they're teasing how they needed someone who has a history in Halloween and horror movies, and then Jamie Lee Curtis came across the stage in the Doom buggy, as she'll be playing Madame Leota. That is, so did the crowd go nuts? They did, they did. <laughs> and, the, and the footage looked really good and I'm disappointed we did not become extras in the movie since it was filmed in New Orleans. Filmed right here, that's right. And is that, that's 2023 or 2022 coming out? Uh, they pushed back the release date. It, it was 2023 in March, but I believe it is now 
um, August, end of August of 2023. So end of the summer movie season, getting ready for the, the fall into ho the Halloween season of next year. Gotcha. Okay. Um, there's a, there was very, very little information released about a movie called Wish. Yes. Um, it, it, essentially, I, I haven't had a chance to look at a whole lot about it, but it seems like it, it's going to be very, very, very Disney. Um, you know, very, very classic Disney storytelling. From my understanding, yes. Uh, they, they, Disney Animation, uh, saw that the 100th anniversary of the company would be coming up, and, and that starts at the beginning of next year. So they realized that the movie that comes out for 2023 should be very Disney. And so they have crafted an original story because Snow White and the, uh, and the Seven Dwarfs was an original property. They weren't basing their movies off of Mickey Mouse or anything like that. So they realized they couldn't do a sequel. It needed to be an original story. And it is the story of how the wishing star ha comes to be. So they are looking at the wishing star from Pinocchio, from Princess and the Frog, from Peter Pan. And they're saying that this special star where did it come from and what is its story yeah so and that seemed it seems real i mean uh it was one of the things where there wasn't a lot of information released about it but i was I, it got me super excited because of the storytelling that was going to be involved they um showed some uh some animation tests for it so from I don't hold me to this internet, but I, it seems as if the star will not speak. So it will all be um, through uh, showing its emotions through motion. Um, right. Right. And then uh, they were also saying that this movie is going to be filled with Disney Easter eggs. And I actually, uh, because of the panel, I made sure that they had a separate uh, on another day a signing for the uh, crew, the director and producers who are creating Wish. They had a, a signing of one of the, uh, of a print that they created. And I made sure to get in line uh, for that print because it seems like a very special movie. And I mentioned the, uh, the Easter eggs to them and they said that it's all, they're all over. Well, hope, hopefully it's got a great story that, that, that young kids will want to see. And it's got that, those Disney Easter eggs that Disney fans like us will want to go and try and watch about four or five times and find them. It does. I don't think that this is going to be one of those where it's just too Disney. They're cramming too many uh, cameos or anything like that. They're, they're trying to force a story. It seems to be its own thing, just tying into the mythology of, of Disney and wish making. Right. Well, Moving from the Wishing Star and uh, something that I thought was really interesting about D23 were not necessarily announcements of things coming, but more about things that were going away. Um, because either, I don't know why. For, so for example, the, um, the, the, the reaction to the announcement that uh, Happily Ever After is coming back and Enchantment's going away. Um, was was I was very surprised that not only that, but Harmonious at Epcot, they're both going away. And for a little while, I'll be honest, one of my favorite Epcot nighttime shows, not Illuminations, although this is my favorite, Andrew, we both know, um, Epcot Forever is going to come back for a little while until the new Epcot show is released later on. Um, and I, I, it's really crazy for... Illuminations went for what, 21, 20, 20 years? Started in October of 99 and then would have wrapped up in 2021. 2021, right? 2020. 2020. But, so that show lasted for 20 years in different iterations, but still. And Harmonious is like, they're already, it's already going to be done. Uh, that's, that's, that's interesting and new for Disney to do. To, to take I'm shocked by it. Harmonious. I'm not really as surprised by Enchanted. And why is that? Well, for one thing, Harmonious uh, seemed to take a lot longer to develop. They have the barges out there. If they're bringing back Epcot Forever in its true form, 
with the jet skis and the kites, you can't do that with the barges. So the barges either have to go or they become incorporated into the show. So there, there was no announcement about, are they doing Harmonious 2 and keeping those big expensive barges out there? Or is it just completely scrapped and the view of World Showcase will go back to what we knew in 2020, 2019, when they started being installed? I'm not, I'll, I'll, I'll be honest, you give me a clear, a, a clear uh, World Showcase Lagoon, and I'm a happy, happy man. I don't need the barges in the, in the World Showcase um, at all. Um, and I, I, if you have not, guys, if you have not had a chance to listen to the Epcot Forever soundtrack, it's on YouTube, it's everywhere. Um, as a Epcot kid, uh, you know, growing up with the, the opening of Epcot, it is, it brings back all the feels, all the feels, the Epcot Forever soundtrack. Uh, Illuminations is, is amazing. Um, I love Illuminations and that soundtrack, but the Epcot Forever soundtrack just has kind of what Harmonious doesn't have. There's no callback. Heart. There's no heart. Yeah, there's no heart to it. Same thing, but the same thing uh, with Happily Ever After and Wishes. There's a heart to Disney that you get from those things. Like for, for my generation and my wife and I's Wishes is like you let you play Wishes and my wife is boohooing. Um, but if you play Happily Ever After for my daughter, she's boohooing. No one's doing that for the current fireworks. Yeah. There's no there's no story through yeah. either of them, e even though it's hard to tell and you, you kind of have to listen to the Imagineers explain the story of Illuminations, Reflections of Earth, there is a story that they used to go from the beginning to the end. Harmonious, they just went country to country. Right. The music's okay. great. There are some, some standout moments. Uh, I am surprised, uh, you know, that they are getting rid of it because... You know, to us as big Disney fans, the the lack of heart and the lack of story really stand out. I don't know how much that really resonates with your guests who are going with their kids and they're loving seeing Coco and uh, Princess and the Frog and Aladdin being shown on those big screens at Epcot. Right. And, and uh, yeah, I mean, and Disney doesn't say this, but as many classic Disney purist fans as there are out there, Disney is going to cater to the once in every two years, once in every three years guest who's bringing their kids. Um, you know, my kids were very lucky growing up. They got to go to Disney a lot, um, but not every family is that lucky and not that every family has the ability to go to Disney. And so Disney cares about the, getting those people because they've already got us if that makes sense. And you and I for, for years have talked about storytelling, storytelling, surprise and delight, surprise and delight. And all those things matter to us. I, I agree. I don't know how much that matters to Joe Smith from uh, Kentucky, who's going to Disney once every three years. Sure. Uh, they are going to be surprised and delighted. Every time. Just, just uh, and, being and, on Main Street, right. That's, what, that's really the core of the difference between a trip to Walt Disney World and to the Disneyland Resort is that the, the difference in guests and needing to engage them in different ways. And Disney World is that every couple of years, the, the guest brings their family. Um, that's the bulk of, of the guests. So you're, you're gonna see more uh, intellectual properties being put in to make sure that the young guests get to see Moana, Zootopia, uh, Coco, uh, Encanto, all those characters that they love that they're seeing on Disney Plus. Yeah, uh, yeah, and we've said numerous times, and I've, I've mentioned to folks when I talk about Disney in general. You know, Disneyland is built for the locals. It's a locals park. Yes, people go. We love to go to Disneyland, um, but it's built for like for for the locals because they go so much. Whereas uh, Disney World is built for the vacationer. And I will shameless plug: um, if you want to go to Disneyland and see literally where Walt walked. Uh, Talking Umbrella Travel can take you anywhere in the world, including Disney World and Disneyland. Uh, Disneyland is amazing. I would, I would recommend it to anybody that loves Disney. Yes, it can be a little bit more difficult to traverse and plan to get out there. But once you get out there, um, park hopping is a, a five-minute walk instead of a bus to another area. Um, anyway, shameless plug and, right there. And one more little shameless plug. Next year, Disneyland will be the center of 
Disney's 100 company-wide anniversary. Uh, so there will be two new nighttime spectaculars, one in Disneyland, one in California Adventure. They're redoing World of Color. Uh, the, the castle will have decorations on it. Mickey and Minnie will have their own new costumes um, all in platinum for this 100th anniversary. And, bring, and they're bringing back a parade, I believe. I forget the name of it. They're bringing back uh, a parade. Oh, it's, it's on magic. the tip of my tongue. It, but it, that, that parade like debuted just months, months before the start of the COVID-19. And when Disneyland shut down, the parade went away. So not very many people have had that opportunity to experience the parade. So they are bringing that back. And I, 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 of course, after they announced it, my family sat down and got on YouTube and watched it. And it's worth bringing back. It's a great parade. Um, so a couple last things to talk about uh, as we, we close our time together. We are, of course, both from deep in the heart of Louisiana. Uh, and so we would be remiss if we did not at least talk about uh, the D23 announcement, the more information about the retheming of Splash Mountain uh, to a more Princess <laughs> princess and the Frog property um, that it's going to be uh, essentially a Tiana-themed ride. Now, first of all, I'm going to tell you what an absolute miss is on this retheming is the fact that we don't have Dr. Facilier anywhere in this ride. And at Disney, if you're listening, you missed on that because we all know Dr. Facilier is the best villain in a Disney property. I, I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I, I don't know if it is possible to bring him back or not. I, I felt like I heard at one point he would be, but it, this is a direct sequel to Princess and the Frog. This is not a retelling of the story. So... It, just, would, fr look, friends on the other side, I'm just saying. Spoil side. Spoiler alert, it would be a little difficult to bring him back. <laughs> no, not friends on the other side. Friends on the other side, I'm just saying. Um, so hold up, hold up the thing that you just had there and tell them what you got there. All right. So at this is one of the five giveaways. Uh, they gave everyone a uh, handkerchief for a New Orleans second line. They brought out the voice of Tiana uh, at the parks panel to perform two of the songs from Princess and the Frog uh, as uh, you know, just a, a celebration of New Orleans. They had brass bands going down the aisles. Everyone was supposed to second line. A lot of people who are not from New Orleans wanted to wave it around like so instead of the traditional way. But, you know, we can right. forgive them for that. We can, for, we can forgive them for that. Well, we, well, we just have to teach them. Right. We can forgive them for the weird beignets they have at Disneyland. Yeah, uh, we can forgive I'm them for taking these right now. My my favorite Disneyland story is um, a, they gave me they gave me a mint julep, and I was like mint julep. She goes, oh yeah, everybody in Louisiana drinks these, and I was like, I've never had a mint julep in my life. Uh, anyway, she said, where are you from? I said, Louisiana. Anyway, um, <laughs> what, what are we thinking about about this over this overlay? I know that Splash Mountain is so well loved um, because of just the the, the it's that nostalgia but i really think this can be can be um, a really good overlay i'm i'm a little skeptical right now um you know i i certainly uh don't mind that necessarily that splash mountain is going away um you know, as walt said as long as there's imagination in the parks uh the, the disneyland would constantly be changing and growing so Disneyland and Disney World are growing away from Splash Mountain. Uh, that's fine. It, it, it'll be sad to say goodbye, um, but that, that is uh, what needs to happen. Uh, that being said, I used to work at Stitch's Great Escape long, 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 long time ago. The biggest problem I had working there was all of the families trying to bring their little kids onto this attraction that had a height require, requirement was on the scarier side because they wanted to see Stitch. Little ones wanted to see Stitch. And I foresee that being an issue here. The little ones are gonna want to see Princess Tiana. They're going to want to see Lewis and Prince Naveen. But there's gonna be a height require, requirement and a scary drop along the, on the way down in order to see their favorite characters. Right. So to me, I would have preferred to see an original attraction created for Princess Tiana. It is necessary. Princess Tiana is everywhere in Disney. Um, and rightly so. It's a fantastic movie. Absolutely. 
build her her own attraction yeah. and retheme Splash Mountain to whatever else it could be. Right. Uh, you know, give give Tiana a an aerial treatment. Give her a, an omni mover attraction that's going to eat people. Like literally, just people can ride and ride and ride, or something like that that doesn't have a height requirement. I would have loved to for them to have used the uh, the technology that they used for the Shanghai Disneyland Pirates of the Caribbean. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Where little, it is a, a little boat, back, What does that look like? It is a boat ride, uh, but instead of being only like traditional Pirates of the Caribbean, Splash Mountain, only one way directional moving. You can only go the way the water is flowing and that's forward. Uh, Disney has found a way to use magnets in order to turn the boat a little more, go sideways. And so there's a little more unpredictable motion for the attraction, but at the same time, it is still family friendly. So that would have been perfect to yeah. go down the bayou and, uh, you know, have this great adventure with Tiana. Right. Uh, and if you haven't had a chance, you can also, in YouTube, you can look up uh, Pirates of the Caribbean, Shanghai, Disneyland, and you'll see uh, how amazing that ride is. So and my yeah. other thought is just how Tiana fits in with Frontierland. I, we know there are, well, one, there aren't really mountains and bayous, no. but they're using it as a salt mine of some sort so there there's you can get some elevation tie in, yeah there's a tie uh, in there. There, there there's your look you're on the search for a special ingredient it's probably tabasco just saying probably so <laughs> and uh but you know in Di walt disney world uh splash mountains in frontierland right there, there there's no real connection between frontierland and new orleans uh, Splash Mountain in Disneyland is right next to New Orleans Square. So they can make this work with some, some new theming. The biggest issue will be what do they do with the Winnie the Pooh ride that is right next, right next to literally it. right across the entrances are right next to each other. Right. Lots of, lots of logistics that they're going to have to figure out. And if anybody can figure out the storytelling there, of course, it's Disney. Or they'll just do what they want to do and make us accept the story, however it works. Um, so two last big announcements from the D23 panel that I wanted to get your take on. Um, first, the first one I think is going to happen. The second one, I don't know that we'll see it in our lifetime because it just it seems like a huge, well, maybe my lifetime. Uh, it just seems like a huge, huge announcement. The first one is that uh, the, the Dino Land area of Animal Kingdom is going to go away. Uh, and a retheming there. And essentially that land is gonna split and you're gonna have um, a, a, a Zootopia area and you're gonna have a Moana area. Um, seems like that is really in the forefront of the people in Animal Kingdom's mind. Uh, I, I, I don't know if, how, what did Josh Tomorrow say uh, about this specific area, Dino Land making that transition? Uh, before Josh Tamar made the announcements uh, for Animal Kingdom and, and the subsequent one we'll talk about at, at Magic Kingdom, he did put an emphasis that these are very early blue sky announcements, or not even announcements, they're uh, concepts, ideas. Um, it, it seemed like they felt like they needed uh, that, that one last surprise, that, that final thought that like Apple does at the end of their uh, their announcements that one big wow, and um, they didn't have a wow that was concrete. They didn't have a wow that said, we're opening this brand new attraction at this date. Uh, so they came up out with these blue sky concepts, uh, but it did seem as if they know Dino Land does not have legs for very long, uh, right. probably because Universal's Jurassic World and Jurassic Park attractions, just Disney can't compete with that intellectual property. So uh, it, it does, to me, seem like Zootopia will happen in, in Dino Land because it'll be very easy to convert the dinosaur ride into Zootopia. Right. And there's that, that nostalgic, I know people are, are, are not wanting uh, dinosaur to go away. I, I, on the other hand, think that it's a uh, it's the same ride mechanism as Indiana Jones uh, in Disneyland. Uh, give me something new there, and I'm, I'm happy. I'm happy to see what you can do, Disney. 
Um, you know, I, I love Moana. I would love to see them do some stuff in that area. And Moana has a great link to the a great link to the story of Animal Kingdom, the the story of the environment, things like that. Of course, Moana is getting the Journey of Water attraction, walk through attraction at Epcot. Uh, Moana is a very very popular intellectual property right now. Um, so to see both of those kind of maybe make their way into Animal Kingdom really excites me um, to see what they can do. Plus, I mean, Zootopia um, is, a, is a hilarious movie. It's, it's one of those movies I can put on and just kind of giggle the whole way through. Same thing with Moana. Uh, I can just kind of giggle the whole way through on those, on those comedic parts. I would have preferred to see uh, some way to integrate the, like, Moana being a, a, a Moana area, but more dealing with the Pacific Islands, the Pacific Ocean, yeah. making it a larger area. It, it does seem as if Disney is content to uh, build these fleshed out areas uh, that are, are well themed and make you feel like you are in those lands, but they are not tied to a larger land or theme. Uh, so like the San Francisco that's coming to California Adventure. It's just going to be a small, little themed area. Right. They're just taking Pacific Wharf and making it look like San Francisco. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh, and also, by the way, I don't know if you've heard or not, Kite Tales at Animal Kingdom is going away. Yes. No more Kite Tales. I will tell you, I, I'm a Kite Tales fan. It's a cute little show. I never uh, saw it. It was, it was, fan. it was, you, you got these guys zooming around on jet skis. The kites are flying. They're landing in the water. It, it was a great break in my walk through what is the hottest place in Disney, and that is Animal Kingdom. Um, so let's end our conversation with uh, Blue Sky Beyond Blue Sky, and that is what uh, the Disney Parks panel, Josh Tomorrow, and the folks there called Beyond Big Thunder Mountain. Um, this was announced for the Magic Kingdom. It is a really blue sky area where they're going to essentially, we have no idea where this is going to be. It's going to be somewhere along the rivers of America, poss possibly on the rivers of America. Um, and if you walk beyond Big Thunder Mountain, you will come to three new areas eventually. One of those being uh, uh, Encanto themed, uh, possibly, possibly the Casita. Uh, they didn't really give a lot of information. I'll let you speak on that in just a second. Right past that, you then go into an area themed of, of Coco. And then past that, out in the Shadowlands uh, is going to be an area. I don't want to call it a land because we have no idea, but a villain theme, a villain themed area. Uh, if I had my ways, it'd be all about Dr. Facilier. It's not going to happen. That's okay. Uh, but talk a little bit about what those three areas were they talked about. So uh, they didn't give out of the three. The villains received the least amount of information. Uh, they did say, uh, Josh Amaro said, for Coco uh, going into the, the village that is in Coco um, and they're celebrating Dias de la Muertes and you would be able to ride on the back of an alabrije. Uh, I've butchered the pronunciation, but uh, so that, that is their goal. That, that is what they envision. And then for Encanto, they were saying that you would be able to visit the casita. Uh, of the family Madrigal. Yeah. Villains, it was just a villain's area. So I've even seen in, in different articles being posted, is it a villain's land? Is it a villain's fifth park? Because that has been in an, uh, a rumor, probably going back two decades, that there will be a fifth Disney World theme park centered around the villains in order to make it more of a adolescent and up um, heavy with roller coaster type rides. Uh, so th there's no telling what villains will be, uh, but it does seem to be this concept of what is on the other side of Big Thunder Mountain, on the other side of this mountain range, and it could be behind Big Thunder Mountain. They would need to do a lot of uh, work with moving facilities around and particularly for the Rivers of America, the maintenance base. Uh, but it is possible to build multiple little land sections back there, or maybe the Rivers of America goes away or shrinks in size, and uh, who knows what happens to Tom Sawyer Island. 
but this is so blue sky that I would would not imagine seeing these before the next 10 years. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's exciting to think about anytime that you're talking about new uh, at Disney, we get excited. Uh, we get excited about new Orange Bird merchandise. We get excited about new garbage cans. We get excited. Disney fans get excited about way so much stuff. Um, we all, they also mentioned uh, just really quick in closing that uh, the Tron Light Cycle is going to get, uh, it's finally going to be opening. Uh, I believe they said spring 2023. 2023. Uh, and, you know, it, Josh Tomorrow was shown again. He's the, uh, give me Josh's title. Josh uh, he oversees uh, all the parks, all the global parks. Uh, he's the vice president of Disney and Parks. There's a video online of him writing it, and uh, it, it, looks, it looks fantastic. Um, if you're riding the people mover, uh, over at the TTA over in, uh, Disney world, you can get a good look at it as you're driving around as it's going around there as well. Um, you know, I, I'm excited to have the railroad back. We, we love a good ride on the Disney world railroad. Uh, but lots of exciting things coming to the Disney parks. Uh, maybe we'll see them. Maybe we won't, uh, you know, a villains park, uh, just a fifth park in general, uh, would be so exciting. I think that, um, you know, Universal is really ramping up their building and Disney is going to have to keep up. Um, the, and, and, you know, Universal and Disney have a long history of one-upmanship and it costs Disney money. It costs Universal money. In the end, it, it benefits us. You know, uh, a one-upman, a one-upmanship war, uh, who can be the greatest showman really just benefits the guest, sure. whether you're a Universal fan or a Disney fan. Uh, it's going to benefit you. I think we'll see some of these announcements become more concrete once Universal uh, Epic Advent. Uh, no, oh no, Epic what is Universe. it called? Epic, Epic Universe. Universe. I almost did Islands of Adventure and Epic Universe together. <laughs> uh, it, once that opens in 2025, I think so. Uh, I think you'll see, we will see how Disney responds if they right. see that they are losing attendance and losing ground to Universal as they open up three new hotels along with this park, uh, then they they have to answer big. Right. And and they will. They have to. Um, that's literally that's literally the history of these two companies. Um, we're going to do this. Okay, we're going to do this. Okay, we're going to. And so it's just, and again, all, all it does is benefit us. I don't know how much more that's going to cost us in five years, uh, but uh, it's going to benefit us. There'll be a lot uh, of Magic Band Pluses that people need to buy for us to get a fifth park. We'll be a Magic Band Plus, Plus, Plus by then. Um, <laughs> it'll be Magic Band suits, like just in complete suits that light up. <laughs> by the way, I have a Magic Band Plus. Um, it's fun. I mean, is it needed? No. Is it Orange Bird? Absolutely, it's fine. Uh, I have an Orange Bird one. Uh, but it is neat to be sitting there uh, in a nighttime show and have your wrist dancing with the fireworks. The problem that I have with Magic Man Plus and Genie Plus and Genie and My Disney Experience is we've gone from doing this to doing this and doing this. Look what my Magic Man can do. Um, and so that that's a bit of a problem for me too. The idea of we have stopped taking in our surroundings and now we want to get those fireworks on film or we want to art film, film, how old am I, film? We want to get those fireworks on our camera or our phone. We want to see our magic band light up. And we miss some of that magic and that storytelling. I have a magic band plus as well. Partners statue, 50th anniversary. Nice. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Um, and it's fun. Like I said, it's fun. You go away with the statues. They talk back to you. I found all 50 of them. I've got them on my Disney play, play, play app. But at the same time, we lose a lot of what, you know, when, when Walt was creating Disneyland, his goal was to spend time with his daughters in a place that he and his daughters could do together. And we've gone to now, I've got to, okay, where, where are we going? Okay, where am I going? How do I, mobile, magic mobile, mobile that. And so we, we kind of, we've kind of lost some of that. Um, I don't know if we get back to it. Maybe I'm just too old school. Maybe I'm too, way too, uh, too much of a Disney purist, but I really like the idea of looking up and looking around. No, I, I definitely agree with you there, Jeremy. Um, I, I, I keep an eye on how much I'm using my phone in general. And I'll tell you the two days we're in Disneyland, my phone usage spiked because we were looking at wait times and the other digital things that came with um, 
Genie Plus because we did it for one day just so we could get the photo pass photos. Uh, I, I had to plug in my phone to an external battery because I was using it so much for Disney. Yeah, yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us this evening as we've talked through D23. I want to thank you, Andrew, for coming on and uh, spending some time talking about just all the things that were, were announced at D23. Any parting words before I close us out tonight? I, no, I don't think so. I wasn't expecting that. I thought you were closing this out. I, okay. I, well, you, you know, I, I guess, uh, you know, if uh, you're wondering if you're watching this and you're wondering if you should go to D23 in two years, if it, if it happens in two years, um, I, I would say if you sat through this entire thing, then you're enough of a Disney fan that it is worth checking out right. at least one time. You, 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 you've passed the bar for being the Disney fan that goes to a Disney fan convention. That's right. And also on the off years, they do hold something at Disney World, usually um, a smaller version of, not D23 by any means, but a smaller version of the announcements and specials and speakers and, and things like that. And you can always look for that. That would be November of 23 as well. De Destination D23. I went to it last year. There you go. Uh, you got to talk my wife into letting me go with you. That's what we got to work on. Yeah, yeah. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining us this evening. Uh, as always, my name is Jeremy. I'm with Talking Umbrella Travel. You can check out all the things that Talking Umbrella Travel can do for you. Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, all the social media sites, we're there. TalkingUmbrellaTravel.com. Um, you can message us on Facebook. We're here on YouTube as well. But we always want to make sure that you're taken care of. So thank you so much for uh, being part of the Talking Umbrella family. Andrew, thank you so much for joining us this, e this evening. And you guys, you have a magical day.